For IV Biology, the Internal Assessment, or IA, is a crucial part to the overall exam score for each student in IV Biology. And it's also the component of the overall exam score that students have the most control over. Um, by being able to spend time conducting experiments, collecting information, uh, analyzing all of that information and that data, students really have the most control over the internal assessment portion of their exam score. Because on the exam, anything can happen on test day and who knows what type of questions you're actually gonna get. And so the IA is the portion of the exam score that, that you really have the most control over. And in this video, I wanna look at the analysis criterion of the IA. And this criterion assesses the extent to which the student's report provides evidence that the student has selected, recorded, preceded and interpreted the data in ways that are relevant to the research question and can support a conclusion. And so we'll look at the different components and criterion of the analysis portion uh, and, and to help you to be able to do as well as possible. And the analysis criterion is marked on uh, a scale of six to zero, uh, with five to six being the, the highest marks then obviously. The first component of the analysis criterion includes the sufficient rele uh, relevant qualitative and quantitative raw data that could support a detailed and valid conclusion to the research question. And so here I've got some uh, pictures of some different types of ways that we could collect data. On the, on the left hand side we've got analog measurements, so it'd be like a ruler or uh, a thermometer versus digital measurements with like a digital thermometer or a digital scale or a digital caliper to be able to measure distances. Digital typically is going to provide us more precise and a, a better quality form of measurement. And these would represent quantitative forms of measurement. We need to collect quantitative data to be able to answer our research question. And whether you are doing an, a, an experiment, uh, an IA, where you're actually going out and collecting data, Digital data collection, quantitative data is going to be the best form. If you're doing an analysis of data sets, then you're also going to want to stick to probably quantitative data that's been collected with digital sources, as they are just much more precise than an analog measurement. Quantitative data differs from qualitative data in that qualitative data is a collection of, of our observations. And we are using words to make those uh, observations. Um, what do we see? What uh, shapes, colors, sizes, changes in physical appearances, those sorts of things. Those are gonna represent qualitative data. So qualitative, an easy way to think of this is qualitative data is words, quantitative data is going to be numbers. Additionally, as well as um, uh, the actual collecting of data, then we need to put that data into some form of tables. And I've got some different examples here of different tables. The first one being an example for some raw data. And so as we collect our data, we, we need to put, organize that in a way that can be displayed. And a raw data table includes those actual raw measurements. And this example are just ones that I made up for a practice assignment. You can see that it's got a, 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 a title, a number title, it's table one. And I also have units and uncertainty certainties for the variables, both in the title and within the table itself. And that's really crucial, including those titles with units and uncertainties. The second table, table two, is the summarized data. And this is going to be the statistical calculations that are done based off of the raw data. So here in this one, I've got mean, standard deviation, uh, standard error, the mean, SEM, and 95% confidence interval. And again, it's really important that both units and uncertainties are in the title and within the table itself. That's really important. It's something that I think jumps out to the uh, IB graders. Lastly, with our tables, the summarized table uh, of information and data should be included in the reports, uh, the main body of the reports. Uh, whereas the raw data should be included in the appendix. It does, it's not as crucial, it doesn't need to be included in the main body of the report, and so that portion can be put into the appendix. The next component of the analysis criterion is the uh, data processing. And this is the criterion or aspect that appropriate and sufficient data processing is carried out with the accuracy required to enable a conclusion to the research question to be drawn that is fully consistent with the experimental data. So that's kind of a lot, but essentially we want to take the raw data that we've collected and then do some uh, uh, number crunching, some processing uh, to be able to help us draw some conclusions. And so always starting, there should be multiple trials uh, for each uh, of whatever the experiment is. And, and typically you wanna have a minimum of five uh, forms or, or trials uh, 
and typically five forms of whatever it is that you're manipulating or modifying. So, so, so on a scale. And I feel that this is one of the best ways to, to score potentially as high as possible in this particular aspect is by if you're actually going to conduct an experiment and collect data, um, you want to have five forms of whatever your independent variable would be and then have five trials uh, of each of those. So a, kind of a, a five by five rule, if you will. Um, and so based off all of those trials, then actually collecting some averages. Based off then the averages, taking those averages, you want to make some graphs. And probably the most common type of graph, if you're doing the five forms of the independent variable and then five trials of each, most likely it's probably going to be an XY scatter plot. And I think this is the type of analysis and graph that is the most straightforward and lends itself to being able to perform the most analysis to hopefully allow the student to score as high as possible. Um, and with our graphs, uh, these are some poor examples, but there should be titles that have units and uncertainties, much like our tables, as well as the X and the Y axis need to be labeled with units and uncertainties, and then obviously the data displayed. With our graphs, we can also include uh, correlation lines or lines of linear regression, uh, which is displayed in our example, both linear and polynomial. And also really important and helpful to include our air bars that are displayed on our bar chart here that are an indication of the 95% confidence interval in order to display our precision with the data. And we can then have this visual representation of which of our particular categories of our independent variable are the most precise. And in this one, it looks like the second bar is the most precise and the last one is by far the least precise because we have such those large error bars there. Additionally, with the data processing and will be really important for data analysis in the evaluation criterion are performing some different statistical tests. Standard deviation would be one of the primary uh, tests that you would want to do right off the bat because that's going to be a, a tool that we we'll use for some of these other uh, statistical tests as well as be an indication of the precision of the data that's collected. Uh, from that standard deviation, you can calculate standard error of the mean, and I've got videos that show how to do both standard error, standard deviation, standard error of the mean, and our next one, 95% confidence interval. That last one, 95% confidence interval, is what we want to use to display our error bars on the graph. And in Excel, you can actually customize those error bars and use the 95% confidence interval to display those. And that's, again, a really good way to, to display uh, the precision of the data that's collected. Uh, the other ones that I previously mentioned, a correlation test using a linear or a polynomial regression line, and then also a chi-squared test is a potential possibility, depending on what your experiment is, typically with genetics or population sample sizing. Not listed here, but also is sometime appropriate, is an ANOVA test uh, or also a T-test, a uh, student's T-test also are appropriate. In addition to actually processing the data, I think it's important to also note that there's kind of two different categories of data that we're collecting within an experiment, one being experimental data and the second being statistical data. And the experimental data is used to assess the hypothesis, and we'll talk about this more in the evaluation criterion video, uh, but we want to decide as the hypothesis supported or not supported based off of the experimental data. This would be like your raw numbers that you're, you're calculating and the average that is, is produced from those raw numbers. Um, the statistical data, on the other hand, are all of those statistical tests that we just talked about, uh, standard deviation, for example. And we use all of these statistical tests to decide, is the experimental data, is it precise and is it reliable? And based off of those values, and, and for example, the error bars on the graph, we can decide, is our data that we've collected precise. And so we've got kind of these two different categories, experimental data and statistical data. It's important to have, well, it's crucial to have experimental data, but it's also really important and crucial to have statistical data so we can make these decisions of our precision and reliability of the data. And that is something that will be done in the evaluation portion uh, of, of the uh, lab and we'll talk about it in the evaluation video. The third portion is data uncertainty, and the report needs to show evidence of full and appropriate consideration of the impact of measurement uncertainty on the analysis. And so when you take a measurement, uh, if you do that measurement multiple times, there's always going to be a little bit of uncertainty or difference between the measurement each time. And, and this is just a given of measurements. And if you're using a digital tool like a digital thermometer or a digital scale to, find, to take a measurement, that's going to be much more precise than an analog measurement like using a ruler. Um, and there's going to be a little bit of variability. And so with this particular aspect of the analysis criterion, you need to identify what are the measurement uncertainties 
of the, the values uh, of the data that you've collected. Um, and so that can be displayed and should be displayed on the raw data table and the summarized data table, as we've already seen, as well as the graphs that are produced. Uh, it's also important and helpful to, in a table or uh, it's somewhere within the reports, uh, before you get to the conclusion and the evaluation, to have a, a, a short sentence or two of identifying and stating what are the measurement uncertainties, what are those values for whatever measurements are done in the experiment. And so it's, it's important to include these, and then we'll discuss them and evaluate them in the evaluation portion. So in, in the analysis, we're just including them on our tables, our graphs, and then identification of them. We'll discuss them and evaluate them in the evaluation component of the lab report. The last component of the analysis criterion is data interpretation. And for this particular part, the process data is correctly interpreted so that a completely valid and detailed conclusion to the research question can be deduced. And so this really goes along with the evaluation because the conclusion evaluation is where you're putting together all of this analysis. And so you've collected the data and now you're interpreting it appropriately and properly to be able to form some conclusions and then also answer the research question. And I can't stress this enough uh, how important it is to actually include data, actually include your analysis in the conclusion and evaluation so that you can draw some conclusions. You, you, you've done all of this experiment, you've collected all of this data, um, you must and it, it's super important to actually include that data to help support whatever decisions you make about the hypothesis being supported or not supported. So that concludes our discussion of analysis criterion for the IB Biology internal assessment. Hopefully these tips and suggestions will help you to do as well as possible in this particular criterion and to have the graphs and tables and measurement uncertainty and analysis to score as high as possible.